Okay, so what follows is going to be um, a really excessive workload of how I implemented a tutorial in um, Dexit. The tutorial is so that um, you actually physically have to kind of um, play through some of the rules and stuff of Dexit so people actually understand what they have to do rather than just watching a video. So I'll probably be breaking it up into a couple of um, videos. This is quite long, it took me a couple of days to do. Right, let's get started. Um, okay, what's the first thing I'm going to want to do? Is probably set up a new type of game mode. Currently there's only one game mode, which is solitaire or, sorry, there's only two types, solitaire or local or multiplayer. So I currently use a bool, so I'm going to upgrade that into an enum. It seems we have more than two types now. We have multiplayer, solitaire, and tutorial. I can get rid of this before I do that. an inspector there because I also have a editor. So, oh, what have I done? Game info editor. There we go. So I want to add that in before everything goes well, so that I can see what I'm doing. Typing is really hard today. Game mode. Game mode. Um, editor go layout. Property field, game mode. Oh, I probably need anything else in there, so I'll just leave that and just see if that compiles. So there we go, now we have a drop down on that game info. So because I've done that, I don't need to use the solitaire pool anymore. So I'm just going to straight up delete that. So I'll get rid of that because we don't need that anymore. And that's all useless. Oops. So instead, let's put this switch case in here. Probably. Now you have to use int value instead of enum value when you use the property fields. I don't know why, but the enum value does not work the same as the int value does. So, game mode, multiplayer, put in the multiplayer, edit code that I've already done. Solitaire, solitaire mode, and then I first make a tutorial mode for consistency. Not that I think I'll have any tutorial options. Like I said, for consistency. We get rid of that. So we don't need that. Which means I can also delete it from here. Okay, console. Correctly. So, again, mode multiplayer, solitaire, tutorial. Cool. Of course, now that the editor works, I need to fix it for in game. Which means I don't need to use solitaire mode anymore. in the game mode it's game modes and it's game mode and I'm just gonna steal that actually I should have put it in one place as well haven't I game info game mode game mode Um, let's put that where the rest of the functions are. Here. Okay, so every time I say whether 
I set whether it's solitaire mode or not, I need to delete that. So where do we use? Do we use this? Set game mode. So if I can set in the front end multiplayer for the demo. Get a solitaire. Multiplayer, solitaire, mm, multiplayer, and another multiplayer. Okay, cool. So now that that doesn't get used anywhere, I will just delete that. Delete all of it. Okay, where else do I use this solitaire? Let's add some getter properties. Is multiplayer, which will just return a bool. Then we'll do a solitaire and a tutorial. Now I'm going to change all of this to is solitaire, is solitaire, is solitaire, okay, which means that this shouldn't be used anywhere anymore. And then is, is that used anywhere? Oh, it is. Is solitaire. Uh, so I can get rid of that. Okay, let's check there's no errors. Okay, let's get on to the good stuff. So now that I have a tutorial game mode, I actually need to load in the tutorial. So to do that, when I've used the game controller, I believe I use a different type. Already I have a client, a local, and a server, so depending on whether you're playing um, online or whatever. So I was thinking if I make a game controller tutorial, I think that might be a decent idea. I'll rename it. I probably don't actually need a lot of this, so you know what, I'm just going to delete. Yeah, delete all of that. We don't need that. Not currently. I can always copy and paste it back in when we need it. So I have an empty tutorial. So now I just need to figure out when I should instantiate this game controller, which is probably here. So we're going to check whether the game mode, set game mode, oh. um, Typing today. Okay. Game mode. So we don't actually care about the multiplayer in the local because that's already handled in this area, depending on whether well, depending on whether it's a local or a online game. But that is irrelevant to whether it's a tutorial, solitaire, or multiplayer. It's this bit that we care about. So if it's a tutorial game. probably could use an if statement there instead of a switch statement, but 
I much prefer switches. They're easy to expand upon. So I'll just copy and paste that, but instead of instantiating the local, we want to instantiate the tutorial. Now, when we instantiate the game scene, and we have it set to tutorial, and nothing should happen, in theory, because I haven't done anything. Yep, that's correct. So the first thing the game does, it goes into the start game. State, I believe. But I don't think I want to do any of that in the tutorial, so I'm going to create a new one. That state, how it currently is, it sets how many players is depending on how many player count that you've chosen on the front end or um, how many people are in the lobby online. But because it's a tutorial, we're going to hard, card, hard code it to one player. Oops. So let's create a tutorial game state. Oh, that's from um, watching the video tutorial. What a script. Let's create a folder. Tutorial states. So we want a start game tutorial state. Uh, actually, I want it out over here, that one, that one over there, because I'm not done this one. So yeah, it's going to inherit from a game state, which is just a base class I have created for the state stuff. So it's got a bunch of fun stuff, like callbacks, and what type of state it is, dead basic stuff. But needed in every single state. Okay, so let's just copy and paste the majority of stuff. And it's a start game. Okay, let's have a think what it needs to do, how it works on the local. It's going to work exactly the same basically. Start place dead is the first thing. Wait, so it doesn't deal out? Am I missing, I'm missing a state, I'm missing the initialized state. I thought the start game state was where I um, instantiated all the cards in the place, but it's not. That's the initialize. So, initialize game state. We'll copy the majority of stuff from there. That looks better. Okay. The copy the constructor. Oops. I hate writing out constructors. Switch them in the long. Okay. Override the public function because that's an abstract class. Probably moan about it, and here's how I actually use it. You notice how errors? Where are they coming from? Yeah, they're just some abstract functions I haven't inherited yet. But I don't need to yet. Okay, so let's copy up what the local initialized game state wants to do, which is start and spawn players. Hello. Using regions to organize my code. Makes it easy to look at things in a glance, like in the document outline. Um, let's just copy exactly and see then what I need to change. So this would not, we would. Would be where it's getting the original play account. We don't need 
I'm just going to put some constants in. Probably maybe want to move this outside later, but I'll just leave it here for now. That is not useful const. And then if I'm using a const, I don't have a magic number floating around in the code, which is hard to track down. So there. Actually, we don't even need a for loop. I'm only going to be creating one player, so let's just get rid of that entirely. Uh, we don't need to rename the player. Ah, I missed more stuff. I think I instantiate a separate game object at the beginning so that I have somewhere to attach the players so they're not floating about. Yeah. So I don't, I don't want objects floating about in the hierarchy. I prefer a nice, tidy hierarchy. I leave it protected. I'm not going to inherit it, but there's no need to change it. So, oh. we instantiate that there, and then this prop object. Oh, we don't need that yet. We'll come back to that. That's just where we put pigeons and guns on the table. Actually, we probably don't even need a core routine for this either. Or should I keep it consistent? I'll keep it consistent. Okay, so that fixes that error there. Then we'll initialize. Screen space. So cards. Get rid of that. Okay, so that's the same thing. We don't need to rename it, which is what that line is doing there, but we initialize it to correct player index. And we add it to the game controller. Then once that's finished, we spawn the cards. Okay. But in this part, we don't really need to spawn all the cards. Unless I do it anyway, just because then I'm going to overwrite. Because when people, when a player takes a card from the city deck, um, I am going to hard code it so that they have no choice, they get what they are given. So I suppose I could just spawn a bunch of dead cards and pretend, and then just check. Yeah, yeah. Um. Okay, let's copy this card list. So I've got a list there. Text to be a code, you just need to know how to copy and paste. Uh, this is really unorganized. I should come back. Okay, I'm going to just spawn a bunch of dead cards to pretend that we have. Um, Work. But I'm just going to um, instantiate a bunch of dead cards to pretend that those are the cards that the player has access to, but then I will later change it so it's not as fake. Lol. That's the thing I want to copy, the initialize card list. I'm not sure what card list was for. I probably don't need it actually, but I'll leave it there for now. And I'll just delete it if I don't need it. The compiler will give me a warning so I know to get rid of it. Okay, so let's look at what I've just copied. So, variable instance dot cards dot get dead count. Okay, let's have a look. That is something I control in game scene in my variable manager. Oh, I've got another arrow. Oh, it's that can pause thing. It's okay. 
So I start with Church Legend Stancy 804 odd cards. Actually, I might have that as a. Do I have a total? No. Um, okay, so we'll just change the dead count to total. We'll just get rid of. And we'll make that into another constant. Because this is just going to be pretend cards. We'll just say 100 because 4 don't make any difference. Okay, card count is each individual card when they instantiate, they get an individual ID, so the card count is just an integer that I increment. So I might as well copy that the same. Let's put these in a new. Do I actually set dead count to be zero anywhere? Oh, not dead count, sorry, card index. Oh, I copied the wrong thing. Do I do it before I spawn things? I am finding some flaws in my code. Okay, I'm just I'm gonna do that here. And then I'll see if that's broken on the main game. That's some other point. Card count. Oh, am I still am I looking at the wrong one? Card. Oh, yeah. Ignore everything I just said. I mean that automatically gets instanced to zero because that is the default value for an integer, so that's okay. Okay, next. Um, we spawn on the card, we spawn in 100 out of them, dead card type, and the initialized card list. Uh, and th that's, that's what's going to be going into the C deck, but then the initial card hand that the player starts with also needs to have um, a whole bunch of cards that we have already decided upon. So, where do I... So that's where I have a uh, deal to player player. There's only one of them. Start deal to player. Because in the main game how it works is once the cards are instantiated, it deals the cards card to each player until the card sorry, it deals a, a card to each player until each player has seven or so cards. And then the rest go into the city deck. So this is where I'll, I'll put the hard-coded stuff in. Um, spawn. Uh, cards. So we'll probably do that afterwards. Let me just type it up first to begin with. Okay, update deal to players. Well, we do not need all of that code. I'll copy it to begin with. No, you know, just... So we want basically one of these card data, card info. Uh, what's it called? Card list. And then I'm going to copy this. Change that to card list. Okay, so instead, a little tutorial worksheet. I'm going to put this over here so I can have it up on one screen while I also code it. So the player starts with two dead in the hand, then the psycho, so it's a survivor, survivor type, psycho, then they also start with the plan, change that to plan, forward, is that a proper thing? Forward planning? It's not called forward planning. What is it called now? Bound down. There it is. Uh, the school bus, which is a vehicle. And the hero. food. Okay, so that's their start in hand. So, the 
this is where I need to copy and paste bits of this. Okay, we don't care if the event is uh, sorry if the card is an event or if it's dead. So if it's legit. Uh, okay. Because this is a core routine, I will put a wait timer in after every time it's finished. Yeah, the deal timer. So it breaks up a little bit. Oh my god. Cut. List. Takes the first card. No, we don't want to do that. Give the card to the player. Uh, the player is going to always be zero. And that's card index. Okay, so how, what do I do with deal timer? And that works for not like one second. So do I want it to take that long? No, I've got that set up so because when the player when it deals to the players, it goes around each individual one. Um because there's only one player. So just uh, yeah, actually that's that's fine. We'll just do that. So I'm just gonna instantiate it here. Deal time. in between each. I've lost it. <laughs> Where's it gone? Uh, not you. Here we go. Um, so then we will yield here. Oh wait, that does instantiate the card. Wait, where do I call instantiate card? I do need that. <laughs> what? I thought I was calling it when I was creating it there, but I guess I'm... Oh, no, I am. Aren't I? Mm, not actually calling it. Okay, so how do I call it? Yeah. When I spawn the cards. When do I do that? Where? Here we go, this is where I use it. And that's where card list comes in. Okay. So this is just a data storage type C to say what kind of type of cards I need to instantiate. But what this does is actually instantiates the card from this. So, what I am going to do is just, and I'm copying that, but we don't actually need to use all of it because we always know that those cards are going to be dead. So, I'll just pop that there. Why am I even doing that step? It makes sense on here, but I don't think I really need to do that. Yeah, tell you what, I'm just going to change that to. Get rid of that. We don't need this. We don't need to do that initialize card step. It's a waste of time. So that's instantiated. 100 odd dead cards straight into the card list. And it positions them roughly where the C deck is, I think. Get rid of that. We don't need this. But then we also need to do the same thing with. This. Um, to what? Uh, I will put a hand list 
on hand list is where I'm going to instantiate all the player this. So it's basically going to be this. But I'm going to pass in what I want it to be. So if I want two deads, oh sorry, that needs to be and and I believe if I pass into there the survivor type, which was psycho, it's valid. Let me just copy that a bunch of times. Two of the psycho, then we have found down. School bus. and food. Okay, so that's them instantiated as well. And they should be in the right place. Maybe no that doesn't look that doesn't look right either. Oops. Ah, this is where I do it. This is where I actually position the cards so that they look like they're stacked on the C deck. This we can get rid of. It's wrong. That must be hand list. Hand list. Hand list. Right. And once that's done, start deal to player. And then divide into the decks. Which again, I'm just going to copy and paste straight from the working local copy. Just create a function out of that. Oh. Oh, does that take a different amount of time? Yes, it does. So I'll finish that too. that and put that here. I don't think we need that, I don't know what that does for. Now let's get rid of all of that. Deal out the cards, start into In theory, that's the initial lights up working. Okay, let's just find. I was missing a couple of abstract class uh, functions, so I'll just find. I can't remember what we're called. Oops. Can pause. Let's pinch. Do not have a can pause? <laughs> can pause. I'm going to say no though. The player cannot pause the initialized tutorial state. For the time being, we might come back to that. Okay, what else am I missing? Oh, for the start as well. Did I just do all that in the wrong class? I think I did. Meant to be in the initialized game state. So we'll just go. Boop. Get rid of that. All of those actually want to be initialized. Um, all of that. And that goes here. Right. That was that. Initialize here. Do I do it in tutorial state? Yeah. So 
when we stop the tutorial today, it's going to go straight into the <laughs> initialize dead state callback, which I probably yeah, need to put something in here for. So let's put you over there because I'm going to copy all the stuff from you as well. to start the state, but we don't need to do this. Okay, so that means when I want to start a state, it initializes that state, starts it, yeah, okay. Probably need to update it as well, so we need to copy some more stuff. Gets dealt out. So our game for is still set to tutorial. So nope, nothing happens. I think that's because I'm not calling anything to start with an initialize. I think I can find in start local. Yeah, I say start spawn players. I do not say that in. We'll override the start function. Let's put the other down there. Yep. Okay, so now something should happen. Not the prettiest, but uh, something happened. Although this didn't deal. Okay. Let's work through what I've done wrong. So from start spawn the players, that was done, that was what I can find because you could see we had a player base in the correct position. So start spawn cards. So I don't know what I did, I must have put the bracket in the wrong place. But now they appear to be going from the right place. Okay, so after that, I start deal to player. Oh, start divide decks. That's why the decks weren't working. Hopefully. There we go. We don't need that many cards actually because that takes a long time. Uh, that crashed. Why would it crash? Um, I'm going to reduce dead count though to, let's say 50. It doesn't really matter, I can change that anyway. Um, but why did that crash on the end there? I would line one, two, three trigger after it's finished. That's not right. Put some breakpoints in. I'm just trying to figure out why it's doing that. So we're using the right hand list because there's seven cards in there. Cause more than once. I must be calling this more than once. <laughs> Let's just put some breakpoints. Maybe I got. 
calling the state in the wrong place. It's for the breakpoint. Oh, obviously that function is getting called more than once. Okay, so we're starting the game. Start. Start spawn. Start spawn cards. Do the now. Finished. Yeah, it is. It's coming from. Ah, it is. Uh, it's not the actual initialized state, it's my update state callback. Um, so I need to get rid of, because I haven't done, I haven't filled in the start game. That wants to be start game tutorial. Start game tutorial state, there we go. Um, of course. Oh, I'm forgetting to finish the previous state as well. Uh, we shouldn't care about that, so I will just pinch that. So that was where it would be set in the current state to null. So because it wasn't set in the current state to null, it's thought that the current state was still initialized and starting again and just going through. So, yep. That was a silly mistake. Wow, okay. <laughs> Broke things even worse. Oh. I can't finish a state if the state is already null. So let's try that again. There we go. And it shouldn't crash and it shouldn't do anything. Yes, good. Okay, so the next thing I'm going to do my little list, is start the player's turn. So, uh, I'm going to do the same thing where I had, um, you know, I had the game controller, client, local server. I believe I also have a player controller. If I just find it first. Uh, game. Player. So I have a player state controller, local online. I want to have a tutorial version as well because they don't get free reign over what they're going to be doing. Let's get rid of these. Don't need any of this. Okay, let's see if I can rename it this time without it freaking out. Tutorial. Um, you know what, I'm just going to get rid of everything again as well because I will copy and paste back in what I need. It's probably going to be a lot of stuff and it is bad to do it that way. You shouldn't really be copying and pasting everything in. Unless I inherit from it. Such as player controller local because there's functions in here such as check for dead cards and check for event cards which I am going to want to use so I could just make it so I, I inherit from local but as they're the only I could always just put them in the base class of player controller rather than have them just in the local that probably makes more sense they were in local to begin with because the um, online version is just basically a receiver of, of network messages, so it doesn't need to do any of this logic check. So I will I'll move that into the base class, which should just be player state controller. I should probably name that a player state controller actually, seen as it's an abstract class. We want to take everything in the checks, pop them into the abstract class, and then re change everything from private to protected. Protected, seen as I will be inheriting them. Let's make it so the player can use this class. 
Why do I set up here? So when I initialize a player, that is where I say whether it's local or online. Uh, but that's this initialize function is only called by the initialize client, so I don't need to change that one. Final references again, so I can see. So this one, this initialize is used in local and tutorial. I can get rid of all those breakpoints. So initialize. Let's just name it initialize tutorial, and I can get rid of all of this stuff. Which have that zero. Um, the player name. I'll just keep that as player, I guess. Doesn't really matter too much. That's just what's displayed, like in the in the bottom hand of the screen. And then that wants to be tutorial. And we don't want to put a mannequin on there. So I'll get in the way. Let's update that initialized tutorial. Don't pass any arguments in. The entry point to this is stats. Let's just copy this and get rid of the things that we don't need again. Uh, yeah, we'll keep that there. If it's the current turn, which it will be, back so we would definitely want that. Uh, the action logger is just something for debug so I'll keep that there not that it matters too much but just for consistency. Trigger event on yeah we'll keep that there. Handle network messages we don't need about that and then the start turn thing will be something that we need. Don't know what it does but have a look and see. Yeah I'm just gonna all of this as well. There's a lot, isn't there? <laughs> we definitely won't need all of that. I think. Okay, let's make sure we go through. For some reason, doesn't really matter. I will just change it to update state player. I'll just change it to state. Either current and act active on that set. Two different types of players. Get rid of everything because we'll add them back in a as we've worked through them basis. Okay, so what does start turn do? Let's have a look and see. Start turn player state just triggers the on start thing. We are going to have extra dead. Uh, uh, if we start off then just by saying the tutorial will just go straight into the carousel just to begin with. Now at certain points as well, depending on what's happening um, in the tutorial, we need to have a little dialogue box pop up. Maybe some sound, a little bit of text to explain what's going on. And I might use IDs or something like that, or maybe action counts. Um, but also there's a set, every action, we're going to force the player to play a certain card in a certain position. So I think that wants to be a new data type, which I can probably expand on later in the future to have the play at this point, players that, etc. Uh, but for now, I'll just do it so the cards have to be played in a certain order, because then I can add in, I can change it later. Once I've got something working and I can see what's happening. Yeah. So I want to create a new data type. I'm going to call it tutorial action. Just maybe, yeah, let's call it tutorial action. 
that sorts itself out. Let's put it in game. Uh, we'll just create a new folder in there. Tutorial. Or let's call it tutorial data. Mono behavior. We're not going to stick it on anything, but it's going to be basically an action. That's what I'm treating it as. Now I'm just going to make everything public for now. I'll probably come in. I don't like public functions, so I'll make a private list. I'm just going to get it working. Now the player base has oh, a base position. So we'll call that position. So that's the position at which each card I want to be played will be played at. And then obviously we also need the card. Info the and I believe that is that. So it's, it's basically this. I want to know what type of card it is. Um, okay, so that's nice and simple. Much love with that. Somewhere I can edit in the inspector. Oh, I'll just hard code it for now. I'll just hard code it for now, but I'll probably move into the inspector later. So if we need to tweak it, we can. And then also when we put strings in and stuff, that would be a good place to put it. So I'll just pop it in the tutorial for now. And I think I want to make it a dictionary. And it's going to be, the first part of the dictionary is going to be the current round index. Int. And then I was going to make that a list, but maybe I should make that a dictionary as well. Um, I was going to make the value a dictionary, sorry, I was going to make the, the value a list. But I should probably want to make that a dictionary as well and have it go by, uh, the key will then be the action index. So that's easier to, so it's a dictionary, we're going to have a dictionary made of tutorial data. We'll call it tutorial actions. It's syntax. Okay, so tutorial actions. Okay, uh, so this is the hard coding bit, which again, if I do in the edit, it is going to be difficult because it's a dictionary. We'll just get it working. <laughs> Just get it working for now. So for the first round, okay, so there's going to be three rounds. And there's three actions in each round. We should probably make that into a constructor. And there's three actions in three rounds. So that's basics. Um, card data, tutorial data. So let's create the constructor for tutorial data. Okay, uh, so here, wait, is that not how I instantiate card info? Oh no, of course it's um, it's a struct, I believe. There is a point as well, maybe having a dictionary, because later on in the third round, I need to play a lucky escape. And a lucky escape doesn't count as an action. So that would be off on zero, which would be incorrect. Okay, let's not have a dictionary. It's just going to be a, a list. Okay, so when a player starts their turn, they automatically go into the carousel. Uh, well, that's what I want them to do, but that's not going to be quite the case. So I'm just going to copy and paste the carousel stuff on here. Okay. 
okay. So as soon as the player starts, they'll have dead in their hand, so they have to place that. So that should automatically go into that. There shouldn't be anything special about that. You know, stock cards, we don't care about that. There won't be an event card, so then it should go into the carousel. So I wonder actually if I play this, this should let me go through it straight away. So after it deals out all the cards, puts in the city deck, it should say, oh, I've got two card, two dead cards in my hand, make me play them, put them outside a base, and then show me the carousel. If everything works, that's what I should do. <laughs> Doesn't. That's going back to the game controller. When I go to the game controller tutorial, I shouldn't actually need and then it should after that go into the player turn. Yep. And for now I'll I'll leave that as non-tutorial specific. Don't know if there's anything in there yet. We'll, we'll come back to that. Am I calling the wrong thing? I should be calling local. That's probably why. Probably why. Instead, I was calling the blade base class. And that should probably be abstract because the exact problem that's just happened has happened. So that should keep up for us now because we don't want it to be the base class, that should be abstract. It doesn't do anything, we want it to be local. Forty-two. I've made the base game, so it is basically just like a modular component system. So it should just plug and play all these bits, which is why I'm doing this this way. So why isn't it? It's the player, but the players know. This is where the tutorial. I'll need to have a tutorial version. Yeah because it's reading the um, there, the current player ID, thinks the player count is uh, 4 I guess, which is what it was last set up as, um, because the tutorial was said we were hard coding it, it should just be one player. So, that's the only thing that's going to be tutorial specific in the start game I think. It's probably going to be more, now that I've said that. Actually, maybe I should change that from so start game player start game game state here. When I set in the getting the current player ID, it's assuming I'm using the player count, which is in theory correct. But I should probably actually be using the game controller to get the play count from there. Play account. Rather than the game info counts, something might have gone wrong. It won't have done can't do, but just in case, but for this reason, um, it's going to use the players that are instantiated inside game controller rather than the number of players it could be using. So this is using actual players rather than the players we asked for. Please don't break up. Hey! So it's like, oh, I have to place a dead, I can only place outside my base. Game starts and it crashes, but that got a little bit further. Player turn game start. I bet that's doing the same thing. Oh, it isn't like the current player. Now, what's wrong with the current player? Oh, actually, I'm probably not incrementing the current ID in the game controller. Um, I probably have to here increment the turn. 
so I can pop that into uh, where should I go? Am I doing that? So that was saying if the current state is the start game, the next state is the player turn, we can comment the turns. Uh, the state has been implemented start turn. Let's just run that again. Oh no. That's Unity crashing. Well on that note, it's dinner it's lunchtime. And my tummy's rumbling. Let's take a break. <laughs>